Hi there, it is Jo from Minerva and today I'm going to be continuing with my pattern hacks for the Minerva exclusive pattern, the Victoria blouse. Today I'm wearing a long sleeve hack, so you can see that in another video. Show you a line to cut here so you can keep the grown on sleeve but add long sleeves if that's your thing. Today we're going to take a look at the hem. So the hem is a long tunic style. I've made one uh, with a short front and a long back hem, so you can definitely shorten the hem. And today I'm thinking about if you don't want that swingy hem at all, if you want that hem to come in and use your waist shaping in some way. So today we're going to use um, Electric Blues, which is one of our crush velvets. So we're looking for a completely different look here. We're looking for maybe something for evening wear to wear with long trousers or a really long pencil skirt. Something that's very slim fitting on the bottom, but you get all of that blousiness from the top. Although this pattern is for woven fabrics, you can switch in with our stretch velvet and I'll show you a few tips for that along the way. If this is the first hack video that you've seen and you've not been introduced to the Victoria blouse, here it is. It is a easy fit blouse with a grown on sleeve. So the shoulder seams run from the neck all the way down to the end of the sleeves. The sleeves have headbands on the bottom. There is a facing on the inside of the neck and it runs here. And then there's a pleat that makes the swing shape on the bottom and also pulls in the V-neck shape. The back neck has a binding on which is really easy to put on and the construction of that makes for a really nice flat shoulder. It's a beginner pattern and it's really easy to make. I've made loads and loads and loads because I've been hacking the pattern into a dress, short sleeves, long sleeves and today I thought I would show maybe a different hem. You can mix today's hemline hack up with any of the sleeve um, ones that we've looked at so you can keep it as the pattern with the hemband on the bottom. You can have a short sleeve on its own. You can have this long sleeve, you can change the cuff. I've got elasticated cuff here, but you could easily shear a section and have a little frill. You can have it short sleeved with elastic. You can have a wide elastic like this one, or you can put a really slim elastic in. I'm gonna to think today about the use of ties. So I'm gonna use a tie on the sleeve so I get a little tie detail. And I'm also going to mirror that with a tie detail on the waist. It's easier if you've made a twirl of this garment so that you can put on a twirl and find out where your waist is, where you want your arm length. So I made a white one of these right from the start and that gave me loads and loads of information and I keep referring back to the white cotton one so that I can find sleeve length, uh, neck depth and my hem length. Let's take a look at how I have changed the pattern pieces. I'm cutting out my next Victoria blouse and it's just a little bit more care needed when you're cutting out the Minerva exclusive velvet because you need to make sure that the nap of the velvet is running down your body from neck to hem. So you'll need to make sure that both your pattern pieces are on the fold and they are the same way up and they're following the nap of fabric. I've made quite a few of these now and there is one little cutting hack that I do which is uh, a fabric efficiency thing. I have been cutting out the front neck facing not on the fold but adding a seam allowance and joining it. It means that I can use this unusual piece of fabric under the arm of the main piece so you've got the grown on sleeve and then there's always this circle of fabric here but if i fold that in half it's not enough to get this piece on the fold so i've been putting this piece here keeping the grain line with the fabric grain line and then adding here a seam allowance. I've even been sewing it without taking the paper off so I've been cutting out this piece, adding a seam allowance
cutting that out and then putting that straight under the machine and following the edge of the fabric. It's fine if you're cutting your pieces on the fold because you'll just have um, uh, seams which are open on the facing. If you're cutting the fabric not on the fold, then I think you would have too many seam allowances in that center piece, especially when you make the pleat and fold. But if you're doing folds for the main pieces, you can definitely go for putting a seam on the facing. I've got space here to put the neck binding. And then I'm utilizing this space under the arm of the front and the shoulder of the back. Hope that's a useful tip for you. First of all, let's take a look at that sleeve shape and we'll look at how we're going to make sure that we've got enough room to put a tie in and that we can turn up a little casing to put that through. I'm going to whiz through the pattern so that uh, we can get to the stage where we look at the ties for the sleeves and the hem band. So I'll be whizzing through. If you want more details on how to sew the Victoria blouse, you can follow Diane's full sew along here. My machine setup is a ballpoint needle for sewing stretch velvet, gutterman thread and I put on my walking foot so that I can stop any drag. If you would like any more information on how to sew Minerva exclusive stretch velvet then you can check out this video, it will give you lots of tips on how to get the best seams. Stretch Velvet um, doesn't like a facing very much so there's one little adaptation that I've made to this pattern which is to top stitch down the neckline and I did that before I did the fold pleat so then these two lines meet up. On the back when we put on the back binding again the stretch velvet might not be your friend on this back binding. So I'm just going to use a piece of ready-made bias binding so that I can get a smooth, stabilised back seam. could once you've got it to this stage where you've got your pleat and your neck binding and you've sewn the shoulder seam you can just hem these and you'll have a short sleeve and you can hem the bottom and you'll have a shorter blouse than the tunic style but we're going to add some tie details to this hem so we're going to sew the underarm seam so that we've got our tubes and I've cut some strips of fabric to make some ties we're going to thread a tie through here. So we need some way for the tie to be on the outside of our sleeve. So the couple of ways you can do it, you can either measure up the three centimeter hem, which is what I've allowed, and you can back tack over that lower seam so it doesn't come undone. Unpick two centimeters and back tack the other end so you've got and then unpick this bit and then you've got an opening the other thing you can do is you can use your buttonhole foot and make a buttonhole here over that seam and then split it with a seam ripper so that your buttonhole is over that seam edge i'm just going to unpick this one and back tack the ends and i'm going to do the same on the other side 
and then we can see how to turn up the hem. Now you should have a hole which is where you can bring your ties through and you've got a three centimetre turn up. Next you're going to turn up your hem, depends what fabric you've got. I've got this stretch velvet here so I'm not going to need to finish the edge. You can overlock around there if you've got a chalet you can press under a one centimetre seam allowance and press under a little bit more if you want to completely uh, enclose your raw edges. So I'm going to turn this up and sew around so that I get a casing with a hole on the outside. We've got a hole at the top and we're ready to put in the tie. Spaghetti straps are notoriously difficult but I'll show you a few ways which, in which you can turn a tie through. If you've got a good way to pull through ties, you've got tube turners or a loop turner or you're, you find it quite easy, then you can sew across the end and all the way down the length of your tie and turn it inside out. You might have seen me use uh, the prim turning tube set before so you've got one set for really skinny straps if you want to make thinner spaghetti ones this one's bigger more for a belt and i think this one will fit my strap the tube fits inside the spaghetti tube that you've made And then with the stick, you push the tube back along your tie. And because the plastic is really nice and smooth and stretchy, you can pull the tie back out really quickly and easily. And it means you can get a really narrow tie without pushing and shoving. Obviously, with this method, you've got one end that's been sewn across and you'll need to fold that end in and hand sew across. Second method you might find useful if you want really thin skinny ties to go in your sleeve heads because you don't want them to look too bulky is to use an overlocker. So chain off the length of your tie. Fold your strap in half. And you're going to bring your chain that you've made to the front put it touching the right side of the fabric and fold it over and then start sewing up your side you need to keep this out of the way of the overlock so you need that to be right inside there in the fold And you need to be really gentle it's tricky to get it started but what you're going to do is you're going to pull on the thread chain that's running up in between and very gently you're going to take the inside and pull it through I'm just keeping the top squeezed together, but you can see it disappearing inside. It actually, I must have the velvet running the right way because that feels super slick.
This one has two raw ends, so you'll need to finish both of those off with some hand stitching. Or if it's a fabric that doesn't fray, you can put um, little knots in the end. Two ways to make sleeve ties. I'm going to take my threading bodkin, grip onto the tie, and then we've got that opening so we can feed through our tie. Obviously this is adjustable, you can make them longer so you can tie them in bows, you can make them short so they just uh, dangle down with the knots on the end, you can make this tighter, you can make it wider, it depends if you've cut your sleeve length to a sort of bicep length or still the three quarter length, you can also use this technique if you make a full sleeve version. You need to do the same on the other side. And now we're going to take a look at the hem, so we're going to want a similar kind of construction along the hem. So we're going to turn up the hem, it's just a double folded hem, but we want to make sure that we leave a little slit and we can decide where we want that. So we can either have our tie dangling from the front, we can have it tying from our hip, we can even have it hanging down at the back if we want to. Here's the bottom of the top, it's just got a casing. You might find it slightly more successful with a different fabric. I'm finding that if the nap of the strap is going in the opposite direction, it sort of gets a little bit stuck inside. And then where the nap is running with the velvet, um, the straps pull out unevenly. So this one is always long. So that one must have the nap going the right way and that one uh, the opposite way so it's your choice if you've got a different fabric you can use the same technique to make a casing for the waist or if you've got a crush velvet you might find it better to create this gathered look with a piece of elastic Okay, so you can see how the tie around the waist has really nipped it in. Still gives that sort of blouse effect. You can still get your enough fabric here to make your feet. And you can tie the sleeves in a bow or you can have little uh, dangly straps. Depends how thin you manage to get them. Um, I must say I made my casing a little bit wide there. So I did run a second line of stitching along the bottom so there's a line along the top a line along the bottom and then the tie goes through the middle it's taken it from the three quarter length up to uh, above my elbow still got that pleat i got the neck fit right right from the start and the back now instead of having a tail it just blouses over at the back you can use all the same methods but to switch in for elastic so you could put elastic through here to make it shorter and you could also use elastic on the waist if you wanted this to be uh, a bit of a movable feast in terms of size but of course your straps will enable you to change the size of your top if you need to uh, maybe make it larger depending on what you're wearing on the bottom or nip it in higher up and smaller so there's a hemline hack and a sleeve hack and they've both been done by making little spaghetti ties. I hope you have enjoyed the video today and it's given you a few ideas to work with the Victoria blouse. If you use different fabrics you will definitely get a different look with the blouse so um, if you make a cotton sateen version you'll get a slightly more structured blouse, probably a good one to square off the bottom and have it tucked in so it's more like a um, a wide sleeve shirt. If you use a visco chalet like this one, this one is called Garden Greeting, 
you'll get a really nice drape on the hem and especially if you're making long sleeves because you won't be creating lots of bulk under your arm. Again, there's nothing to stop you using a stretch fabric. You might want to have made the pattern once before so that you can see the sizing because with a stretch fabric, you might need to size down. We would love to see if you have made the Victoria blouse, changed it, what fabrics you chose for it and a lovely description of how you got on, especially with the instructions. Do make an account with us, share your makes, inspire our sewing community and drop in a photo and a little description there so we can see what you've been up to. You can join the craft club over at Minerva where you will receive discounts and offers throughout the year. You can go to our YouTube channel where you will get lots of sewing inspiration and content. There are sew alongs, uh, learn to sew videos, pattern pairings, uh, new releases. There's lots of inspiration there to inspire your next sewing project. Thank you very much for watching. We'll call again soon.